Anybody have growing pains when they were growing? Bella? Anybody else? I remember I was, um, how tall are you, Bella? You don't know. I think maybe I was, a f maybe about six inches or I was probably five one. I think I was 16, um, 16 or 17. And uh, had already, yeah, it was, yeah, it was after, yeah, probably when I was 17. It was quite late. People were still puzzled that I would, that I was still going to grow. And um, but my growth spurt happened in about six months. And it went so fast that my dad was so upset he had to buy me new pants all the time. And uh, he was upset because I wouldn't wear them. He'd buy them. I wouldn't wear them. I enjoyed wearing shorts. And it was fine with me. But um, he's probably thinking, you know, why can't the boy just grow naturally, slowly, right? But it was an instant. It was instant looking back. It took a couple months. But when you think about this passage, you know, here we have the Son of God trying it again. It doesn't make too much sense, right? But also we know through our life, through our journey, can somebody pass me some tissue? I'm not sure why it's um, warm. That you do grow slowly. It takes time for us to, to learn some of the things that God wants us to learn in our journey. But the human side of things, the Instagram side of our lives want, thank you, want things to be overnight. We get upset because it wasn't fast enough. Man, I wish, you know, you mess up, you're like, man, I wish I didn't have to do that. But also in my journey, I've seen where fast growth has its disadvantages. When you grow fast and you don't go through the process, you don't know what has worked. It doesn't also teach you resilience. Some of the strongest people that have done some big things in this world have um, gone through a, a very long phase of failure after failure after failure after failure. And sometimes it, you know, when you see that, the outside, of, outside world thinks it's overnight success. I still remember uh, there was a band called No Doubt. Anybody know No Doubt? And um, I remember when they won an award. And uh, on the stage, on the platform, they said, oh, the newest band, right? And she got up, received the the award and said, you know, I don't know why they keep calling us the newest band. We've been around for 10 years. You just recognized us late. <laughs> so going through the times when you're not recognized, it builds resilience. You build on the failures of trying things, which make for a wonderful foundation. And if you work or if you grow too fast very quickly, you don't know how to take steps of faith, little steps of faith that'll increase your faith. And we get antsy. We say, oh, I don't have a job. I don't have a job that pays me enough. I don't have any friends that are sticking around enough. You know, some of the friends that have seen you through your worst will always be there no matter what happens in your life, but you have friends that come around at your best time and you have to go through a, a time where it's a valley, they're gone. But one thing I want you all to do is to have a measuring stick, to write down what God has done, some small things. You know, Jess and I, well, it's mostly Jess that does the writing, but when we have some prophecies over our lives or something significant uh, happens in our lives, we write it down. And you write it down so you can see that 
the, the growth that has happened, even though it might be small, or even though um, the words that somebody has spoken don't make sense right now. And it, you're like, we, we accept this word, but it doesn't make any sense. And you go through the season where, and I always tell people, you know, you don't even see God, at least me. I can see God always working through a situation, but I can, all, I can see God very clearly once that season has passed and God has done everything. His hand of protection over the situation, that could have gone really wrong, right? But he takes care of us. And we're not used to being the same person that we once were. You look back at yourself five years ago. Have you come a long way? I sure have. But now you see what God's done in year one, year three, year four, year five. I'm growing gradually. I want you to be growing gradually. I want you to be taking in what God has, God has taken you through. I want you to understand the revelation through the journey through the process that he puts you on. They say even a thousand, a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a, everybody knows that. But you got to get there. You got to move your leg. You got to lift that leg up. And we all want miracles. But don't be disappointed if God takes you through a very dark journey of knowing yourself and overcoming yourself so he can reveal himself to you. And you want to, why, 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 why? It increases faith. It increases your trust in God. And I can personally say that in my life, I have seen when I release it and say, God, what are you trying to teach? What am I supposed to learn in this situation? Sometimes it feels like I might not even feel God, right? But now I've come to a point in my life where if I'm going through a season where I'm not hearing things, where I'm not seeing things, I say, hey, what, you, what am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to learn? And this Bible passage we have read is an example of vision gained through process. Don't you think it's funny that when Jesus spat into the man's eyes and puts his hand on, on it, the man says, the people are blurry like trees. This is God. Now Jesus, our God, our Savior, he's got to spit again. Now he's got to try it again in a different way for him to get that miracle. But you always think Jesus is like a hey instant. He's God. He should be able to do this. I guarantee you if Jesus wanted to do that, he could have, he didn't even have to touch the man. He didn't have to spit the man. He could have just thought it and it could have been done. My mom was healed last week through that. Nobody laid hands on her. She was healed. Went home, a different woman. And it's funny, she said, yeah, we we're trying to get her to move around and exercise. She says, can you take care of the front road and get it nice so I can start walking again? When Jesus steps into your life, you're a different person. But if you're here today and you're saying, well, it hasn't happened to me yet. It hasn't happened fast enough. I don't like to wait. Why do I have to wait? But Jesus wants us to remember that this is a journey that he's going to be on with us. Verse 22, they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. Somebody say, touch him. Touch him. And I want you to picture this. You know, Jesus had, done, had just got done feeding 4,000 people. He gets into a boat and his worship team, and he's enjoying some music. I'm I'm sure they were singing on the boat, all right? And he goes. 
And when he gets there, a group of people, as it says, some people, they're not important, obviously. They bring a blind man, and I don't know why they had to beg Jesus, but they had to beg him. And talk about pressure, you know, the fame. It precedes you, now you gotta perform a miracle right in front of other people that you don't even know, not even too important. And I want you to understand the little sentence very clearly. Every one of us has an opportunity and an obligation to bring people to Jesus. If you know of a friend who is blind, and it might not be physically blind, but might not have vision for their lives, you bring him to Jesus. You bring him to Beach City Church. We'll connect him to Jesus. And everyone's watching today. And ask myself, how many have I brought to Jesus? But let me ask you a question. Who has been instrumental in bringing you to Jesus? Was it your mom? Was it your dad? Or was it your friend? Was it a stranger? Can anybody give me a show of hands? How many of you can say I've come here because of my parents? I know Jesus because of my parents. Yeah? How many of you can say I know Jesus because of my friends? How many of you can say I know Jesus because of a stranger who walked up? There you go. Now I want to challenge both of you that raise your hand. I want you to be that stranger to the people that are outside. It's not easy being that stranger. It's awkward. But I'll tell you this, Jesus will go with you. The man who was blind during these days was an outcast. Many believed it was for his sins that he was blind, that he was born blind. And because of that, the rabbis of the day did not touch him, did not want to go near him. But you know, Jesus was a rebel. Somebody say rebel. Somebody say disruptor. It was illegal for a pastor to go and touch a, an outcast, but here's what Jesus does. And Jesus wasn't a regular pastor. He was God in flesh. He stepped out of divinity, wrapped in human flesh so he could touch us and he could transform us and do miracles along the way. How many of you are thankful that Jesus has touched your life? Amen. It takes the messiest areas of our lives and he transforms it into beautiful design, beautiful flowers, beautiful talents that could be used for him. And Jesus touches us and he takes us on a journey. Sometimes you can't even see it starting. Now he took the blind man by the hand and he led him outside of the village. Somebody say, outside of the village. And he holds the man's hand and he takes him outside. Listen to this. He doesn't heal him right away. In a world where we say, okay, you know, time's wasting. And I'm pretty sure the blind man was also getting antsy. Why can't I just have it? Why do I have to wait? Jesus says, wait, I want to take you on a journey. I want to show you what the process is about. So he takes him outside of the village and he's showing us something. And I want you guys to read between the lines here. He's saying, I know you want a miracle, but I want you to have something better. I know you want it instantly, but I want to take a journey with you for eternity. And I believe Jesus is leading him to restore his spiritual sight just as much as he is restoring his physical sight. What is spiritual sight? It's called faith. What is faith? The ability to see the unseen. 
How many of you have faith here? We don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. And what's this point of faith? Is it about getting instant miracles? Faith is about waiting to the seasons when you don't have that touch, holding on hope that God is going to deliver. It's to follow Jesus when answers can't be heard. It's to trust that we're going to be with him when it gets quiet. And there's a reason why Jesus wants to take him out of the village. He wants to show us that sometimes the environment we're around, we need to get rid of that. And if you don't know the power of your environment, the friends that you surround yourself with, just look at the friends that you have around you. You are a reflection of that. And the Bible doesn't really clearly say anything bad or good about that village. But there's a reason Jesus takes him out of that village. And I want to ask you, where are you? Is Jesus asking you to come out of that village? Is Jesus taking you out of your village? Do you need to get Jesus to take you out of your village? Are you surrounded by people who will tell you that you're a child of God? Or are you surrounded by people who will tell you that you're a child of the world? That you've got to do things the way everybody does it? Sometimes there's noise that distracts us. Noise that makes us feel that we've got to do something. But we have to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And to be a follower of Jesus Christ, we have to see clearly through faith... And he's establishing that. Everyone needs a place where they can be alone with Jesus, right? Takes us out of that noise. For me personally, I enjoy it when I drive by myself and there's no kids or anybody around. I get to think, I get to meditate. And I don't know what it is about driving, the chaos that it, that it is, not obviously in the city, but when we're driving further away. But my spirit is connecting with Jesus. I sing, I worship, I, I focus my attention on what he's trying to tell me or what he wants me to do. But I, want, I, I, you know, I don't, don't really know about you, but some people won't leave the environment that's causing them to, to be in darkness. Or their friends that won't let you follow Jesus. Or the job that won't let you prioritize your relationship with your God. And it's because you're afraid. You're afraid of letting go. You're afraid that your provision might not come. You better know how to access God's presence when you're in a tough spot. You better know how to access God's presence when you're struggling with your marriage. You better know how to access God's presence when you're struggling with your finances. You better know how to access God when the report from the doctor says you've got cancer, but you've got a God that can erase that like it never happened. That's when you leave the village. The village has, that's no good for you that God wants you out of. But you got to walk alone with Jesus. And sometimes it's scary. Leaving unfam familiar territory to go into something unfamiliar requires courage, requires faith. And this is the time when you don't walk by sight. You walk by faith. I must walk by faith. Faith for miracles. No, faith to follow Jesus. It's not to get good stuff from God, but it's to walk with God. Let's look at that next verse. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? Do you see anything? There's seven different accounts of this, of blind men being healed by Jesus. And here's what makes this one special. 
And he always does the miracles a little bit differently in every instance. Jesus wasn't a very consistent healer. He had different ways of doing it. And here, he leads him out of the village. Doesn't want to do it in front of people. And to make matters worse, he spits in the man's face. Don't try that outside, all right? And that's strange even for that time, you know? It's not, it's probably because the man was blind, didn't see it coming, but I don't know. I'm just imagining myself being over there watching Jesus spit in his face, and I'm like, I don't know what I'd do if Jesus was spitting in my face. Did he just do that? Did he just do what I think he did? I come for a miracle and he spits in my face. How bad do you really want to be healed? How bad do you really want to be touched by Jesus? And you wonder if this dude had heard about Jesus healing the blind, making the lame walk and wanted healing too, but definitely did not, I'm pretty sure did not expect him to be spitting in his face. And worse yet, you know, Jesus goes on a second try. He's like, hey, you know what, well, hold on a minute. I thought you were the Messiah. I thought you were God and you got to try this over again because it's not done. Why don't you do what you did over there? Because that happened quickly, right? Instant. Can't you do the same thing? Can't you do what you did for him? He didn't have to be spat on. In this day and age, we're looking at everybody's life. We get to drawn into the, the results the finished product of other people's lives and we think, man, God did it so quickly. Half the time it's all fake, by the way. It's not real. But for those that it does happen, they have gone through some major trials. They've gone through some valleys. The journeys. But when I look at myself, it looks stunted, it looks delayed. When's my miracle coming? When am I going to get taller? When am I going to get a better paycheck? When am I going to get a better job? When is my better half coming? I know some of you who need a better half. Not that you're the worser half. You just need something better. The question isn't why hasn't it happened yet. The question might be, is he going to do it in a different way than you thought? More than likely, he will. Maybe God knows you so well that the very thing you ask for, he needs to delay so you can learn to trust in him. Maybe he wants you to go through a refining process so it helps you build your faith muscles. Maybe your faith is weak. Maybe you need to exercise that faith a little bit more often. And then Jesus asked him, do you see anything? Have you ever noticed Jesus is always asking questions? He's never telling us what to do. He asks questions questions. What do you see spiritually, he's asking. Jesus was always trying to get others to see the way he was seeing things, which was in a spiritual perspective. A mark of a great leader is to get others to see what they're seeing. We were just honoring my uncle, uh, Bishop Ernest, and a man was sharing a story about how he had taken him into a, um, a land full of trees. And uh, it was late at night, and he said, what do you see? And uh, the other pastor had said, well, I see a bunch of trees. And uh, he said, well, close your eyes and look. Because he was seeing something big. Long story short, there's a big school that's been built over there. Vision gives pain a purpose. Visions create passion. You know why? It's, it is, this, this time is nice. 
But the season of building God's church here in Vizag for Jess and I is, is because we have a vision. We have a purpose in the making of this church. And that vision helps us persevere when times are tough. Helps us continue to stay focused, continue to hang on. It gives us a drive, it gives us an ambition. Vision sets direction. Jesus asks, what do you see? What do you see? And I've been speaking, I've been talking to Jess about what I see the church, Beach City Church, going through. And it is going to go through a transformation this year. Things are happening. And I see something good. I see the presence of God flowing over the people. I see miracles happening, instant. And I see longer ones, the journeys that are going to be taking place also. I see hundreds of people coming this year, this 2022. It's back to the Bible verse. Then the man looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Trees don't walk around. Blurry sight, right? I really want this to sink in for some of you. They brought this man and begged Jesus to heal him. And he can't perform a miracle right away. He walks him out of the village, spits on his face, touches him, asks him what he sees. And he says, I see people that look like trees. And if you're the people that are standing next to this whole situation, you're like, man, maybe he is a fraud after all. Maybe he's not real. Maybe he really can't perform miracles, right? I wonder if this man has now had a spiritual healing before the physical healing. Maybe the metaphor for trees is the way that we are designed to live life. The Bible says we are trees planted by living water. But there's something that special about trees. They don't become a tree overnight. They require death of a seed, death of your old self. They require resilience to grow out of the ground, push through the mud that is holding it down. And as it grows, the roots go down deeper. They spread out seeking nutrients and water and it grows strong. A tree is sturdy and through the journey that you're going to be taking with Jesus, you're going to become sturdy. And I'm glad the blind man didn't say, well, I see some people like grass. Imagine that. Grass. It's a plucked out. No, he says trees. We were made to grow strong. We were made to go deep. We were made to have a connection to living water. You're not made of grass. We're called to be trees, called to be strong. But let's get back to the physical level of this man's eyes. But let's just say, well, he's probably not seen anything spiritual. Let's just talk about the physical sight where people are blurry and his sight isn't clear. He couldn't see what they were. You know, you think about it. How does he know how trees look if he is blind? Logic would say that this man was not born blind, but he had turned blind later on. Never having something is, is far different from having something and then losing it. Being born without legs is way different from being born with legs and then having to have them amputated later on in life. There's a certain thing, freedom, that you miss. There's a certain joy that you have experienced that you missed. Maybe you've lost your vision that God has for your life. Maybe you've lost your imagination that you once had. Maybe you've lost health. Maybe you've lost relationships. 
Maybe you've lost your will to live or your purpose. And I want to encourage some of you that might have lost it. I want you to bring that focus back to Jesus because he is the one that restores. Slowly you're starting to see something blurry because it's not going to happen right away. It starts blurry. And if you feel like you've lost something today, you start seeing and it starts blurry. But Jesus has already started doing something special and you've you got to hold on a little bit more time because he's going to have to do it again sometimes. Verse 25, once more Jesus puts his hands on the man's eyes. Once more. Somebody say once more. What, because Jesus couldn't do it at the first time? No, he had to do it once more because of me. Because of the spiritual journey that I had to be on to trust him that he is the maker, that he is going to deliver. But maybe that once more was to show us that even if we messed up, that he would still touch us once more. That even if we sin, that he would still forgive us once more. Even if we go the wrong way, he would still bring us back once more. We serve a God who would do it again and again and again and be fully, when we fully don't see. But how do you really know that you'll get it back? Because our God, he goes a step further. How many chances do we have? As many as it takes. You have once more, once more, once more he's gonna put his hands on you. Once more he's gonna grab you closer then this blind man's eyes were opened. His sight was restored. Somebody say restored. And he saw things clearly. The word restored means it was brought back to its original state. You can't restore something if it's lesser than what it used to be. It wouldn't be called restored. It would be called cleaning. And it's interesting that the word restored is used. Bring back to its original state. To bring something back to its original state, there's a fact, there's a time factor. It doesn't happen overnight. He could be making new things. When things get old, it takes time to bring them back into that same state. And that journey that we have to be on. You have to take out things that don't work in God's kingdom. You have to take out things that don't work according to God's journey for you. You've got to take out your wrong mindset. You've got to take out the wrong beliefs. You've got to put the right kind of wiring back in your brain to restore the power that God has placed in you. You've got to rip out the shame that's holding you back. You've got to rip out the guilt. You've got to rip out the mistakes. You've got to rip out the consequences. I have to deconstruct it in order to restore it to its original state. Restoration takes time. Restoration rarely happens overnight. Restoration happens little by little. You start seeing the light, then it might get blurry again. Then you start seeing the light again. It might get blurry again. You get 2020 vision, right? Speaking about 2020, it's a year we all want to forget. But I'll tell you one thing. 2020 made my vision a lot more clear. How many of you can agree? Sometimes we have to go through a 2020 for us to see a lot clearer. Sometimes we have to go through a 2020 for us to get rid of the baggage that God was putting, that God wants us out of, wants out of our lives. Sometimes you got to go through a 2020 for God to restore you fully. So here Jesus is restoring the blind man's sight. And then he sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. And I don't really know what it is about the village that Jesus doesn't want him to go, but he is not liking it. He says, don't go there. But I do know when Jesus takes you out of something and he doesn't want you to go there, it's good for us to just 
pay attention to that. In that place might have been a place that made you spiritually blind. He sure doesn't want you to go back into that mess. Maybe there's a lesson for you and I here. I know many times people are healed and they go back into the same things and that get them back into that same position. And they wonder, oh man, what happened? Now when Jesus touches you and heals you, he wants you to be a new creation. You can't go back into the same village and expect to be new. You get pulled back into your old habits. Isn't this village good? Why is he asking me to, to leave? And I wonder today if Jesus is, doesn't want you to go back to your village. Not because the village is bad, but make, because maybe the village is too big. Gradual miracles are no place for crowds. It doesn't look good, right? When everybody's watching, it's not happening. Audiences don't show up for the practice. Arenas don't celebrate the process. They celebrate the performance, the grand finale. But if this man had gone back to this village, he wouldn't have encountered the immediate hype. It would have robbed the gradual lesson that he was trying to, or that Jesus wants us to learn. We overvalue the immediate miracles and undervalue the gradual gain that he has taken us step by step by step. Jesus is trying to sell us to, trying to tell us to celebrate, not the eyesight, because everybody you know, looks at what's outside and they want to say, oh man, this, this, this guy can see. No, he wants us to celebrate the vision that he has received. He wants us to celebrate the journey that he's going to be taken with the blind man. And I wonder if we can sort of build a community that Jesus might have said, hey, you know what? Just, I want to take you out of that place. I'm going to create something special for you. I'm going to make something. In that world, that the, the village that he wanted uh, you out of, the band can come back. We can call it the world. But there's a special place I want you to have. This place that is... is, is is filled with people that will help you on the journey I'm about to take with you. Because I know this journey is not going to be easy. There are going to be times when you're going to fall. There are going to be times when you say, hey, you know what, I can't see anymore. It almost feels like your hands covering your eyes. But maybe, maybe if we build this community, I wonder if we can build a, 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 a church, the church, that is excited to look after somebody who is on a journey. I wonder if we can build a church that is excited about putting in the hard work that is needed to be following Jesus. I wonder if we can be the church that can support somebody that says, hey, I need help. I wonder if we can walk up to a stranger and say, hey, I see your situation. I know there's a place. Let me take you there. Why don't we all stand up? If you're here, If a friend has led you here or you're still in a situation where you're spiritually blind, where you can't see your tomorrow from today, where you can't see what God has in the future or that your future might be looking dull, 
want everybody to close your eyes. This is between you and God. This is not about anybody else. I want to remind you that just like this person that had that had been blind that had walked outside of the place that he was familiar with taken steps of faith that you too would take that same step and say Jesus take me In, in that first step when it doesn't work that you wouldn't say okay I, I'm, I'm going to go back no but that you would stand firm that you would stay strong that you would continue to hold on to the people that brought you there that God would put you in a community that would give you people to hold on to when you still, your miracle still hasn't come, but you're still holding on tight, saying, God, give it to me. Help me see. You might have come for one physical miracle, but God is going to be doing something spiritual in your life. He wants to transform you for eternity. And if you're feeling any shame, and it's not easy when you've been taken out of your familiarity, but I want you to put your faith and your trust in Jesus. The things that you know of, that you have experienced in your life, that have brought comfort or a sense of familiarity that you're okay with. I want you to know that Jesus has a new journey that he wants you to go on today. He is going to be opening up not just your physical sight, but a vision for your life. Because a vision will help you go through that journey and persevere through the hard times. And he says he's got something beautiful for you. An eternity, in fact. Not just when you leave here. Why don't we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the story of the blind man. And for revealing your word about the journey that you have us on. And I pray that through this, we might learn that you're going to be with us for a long time. That you're showing us that even when it's hard, that we are to still hold on to you. Even when it seems blurry, that there's going to be another chance. But you're going to come through. That you're going to heal us. That you're going to come through. That you're going to give us provision. 
that you're going to come through and take us out of our misery that you're going to come through give us that job that you've destined for us that you're going to come through to give us good relationships that you'd want for us and i pray each and everybody that is here would be touched by that reassurance Ask this in Jesus' name.